Hey guys, Average Joe here, and I am back with my fourth and final installment of my stress test videos. In the previous videos, I stress tested the locking pins. Then I tested the lip of the 552 discs. Then I tested the face of the 1090 discs. And now in this video, we'll test the face of the 552 discs. But before I do that, I want to bring everyone up to speed, anybody, especially anyone who has not been following my videos for the past couple of years. Uh, basically, when you're using your adjustable dumbbell and you're moving your hand through a range of motion, you know, let's say it's a curl and you start out horizontally and you twist to the top and now your hand is vertical or a chest press or a fly or a tricep extension, whatever it is that you're doing, your hand is going to be going through a range of motion. And as you change the angle of the dumbbell, the orientation of the dumbbell, you're changing the way that the plates interact with the handle, the kinds of forces that these plates place on these components. For example, if I hold this dumbbell in this orientation with the crossbar at the top, these plates are U-shaped. There is no you know, material up here, they're U-shaped which means that these lips are supporting 100% of the weight of each plate in this orientation. If I flip this handle 180 degrees, now the shaft and hub support 100% of the weight of the plate. If I flip this handle up vertically, now the face of the disc, the top face of each disc, supports the weight of the plate directly above it. In this case, this disc is supporting the entire weight of this plate. The next disc is supporting the weight of this plate. If, <clears throat> if I hold this dumbbell in a way, like a, you know, if I'm doing some sort of exercise, maybe I'm trying to imitate kettlebell exercises, and I hold this dumbbell by this plate, now I'm applying the entire force of the weight of the dumbbell, whatever I have on here, 20 pounds, 52 and a half pounds, I'm supporting the entire thing on the face of the disc that is directly above whatever plate I'm holding. In this case, I'm holding this plate. So the disc directly above it is now uh, bearing the entire force of the, the dumbbell, whatever weight I have on this dumbbell. Consequently, what ends up happening is over time, you know, you, you break these, um, these discs. And I've showed people this in past videos, but if you're new to this and you haven't seen it, you know, the, uh, these discs break in a lot of different ways. And the whole point behind the all metal discs was to just kind of get rid of that weakness. This, this, uh, what I would call a flaw in the design. So, uh, in this video, we'll now test the final thing that I, that I wanted to test here, which is the face of each of these discs. And what I've done, it, just like in the previous videos, is I selected the same disc from 552 Series 2, 552 Series 1, my cast discs, and my machined CNC discs. And they are all the same uh, disc. In this case, it is uh, disc three, if you're talking about the OEM naming convention, or disc B, if you're talking about my naming convention. So to be, you know, fair, we're going to test all the same discs, and they also must be in good condition. No cracks. We can't have any kind of cracks around on the face or anything like that on our discs. That way we know we're starting with fresh discs. In addition, we will test a disc that was previously glued so that we can see what happens to the strength of the disc on its face when it was previously glued. So let's get started with this. I've set up the, the fixture here with the vertical shaft designed for the 552 discs. I have the same old Mark 10 
force gauge up top and that thing is ready to go. Uh, we're going to put it on the correct mode for applying force down onto these discs. Oh, and you know, make sure each time I have to make sure it's zeroed. It's not always perfectly zero. You've heard me say that before. It depends on the forces of having this weight hanging there, but it is zero for the purpose of our testing. Now we'll start with a, let's say 552 series one. So we've got our 552 series one disc. We're going to mount that. Make sure it's secure. And make sure that we're at zero. And we're going to apply a force. And I want you to watch carefully here at what happens with this disc as I begin to apply a force. So let me see if I can zoom in before we touch anything, okay? And we're just gonna apply light force. You see this, that right there, the flex. Watch that. Now I'm going to show you how light that force is. Five pounds, that's it. It took five pounds of pressure to create that much flex in a 552 Series 1 disc. This is not a strong disc. Now, I'm going to apply pressure until this disc connects to the head of this Allen. So I'm going to bend this disc all the way down there and see what the force, what force was required to do that. So first we're going to come up here and make sure that we're we're fair here and we re-zero. There we go. Now let's do this. Now you can see the deformation. Oh, and it cracked. Can you see this? So bringing it all the way down cracked the disc. That's broken. That's unsafe now. So let me bring the pressure off of it. Oh, <laughs> and it's really deformed. <laughs> wow. Holy crap. So 54 pounds. That's it to cause a 552 Series 1 disc to completely fail uh, in one shot. That was just the application of force one time. 54 pounds and it failed. Now, we can try to repair this, right? We could pop this back into place if it'll, if we're able to. Some are, some aren't. This one would be very difficult. But if you're able to pop it into place, apply some glue, you might think, okay, uh, you know, I've repaired it. I'll continue using it because, uh, you know, I've glued it. What could be uh, the problem with that? Well, let's take a repaired disc. This one has been glued along its face. Of course, this entire joint's weak because it is no longer one solid piece of plastic. Now there is that glue barrier between these two parts or sections of the part. But let's take that, place it on our fixture, tighten it down, come back up here, 54 the previous one failed on. Come back down here. And let's see. Now this one here. <laughs> can you see that flex? It's already flexing. And it hasn't even hit five pounds. But let's bring it down to the Allen. Oh. <laughs> so that recracked. And, you know, there we are, all the way down to the Allen. And if we come up here, it recracked at 16 pounds. That's it. The original disc took 54 pounds to crack it. This repair took 16 pounds to crack it again. That's, that, that is completely unsafe. I don't use glued discs. 
I haven't in more than two years. I used to. And then they would re-crack and, you know, I would uh, <laughs> get sick and tired of it. And that's why I have the discs that I have today. But, uh, you know, this glue isn't really going to hold. I don't care what you use. Epoxy, use whatever you like. The crack is never going to be as strong as the original disc. And the original disc isn't that strong. So, 54 pounds cracked the unbroken one. 16 pounds cracked the previously broken one. Let's try a 552 Series 2. So we'll get that on. And by the way, I'm testing in the same section of each disc. That way, you know, we're not testing here for one and here for another one. We're testing here on all of them. So now we will put the 552 Series 2 to the test. Okay. Come back up here. Zero out. Come back down here. And let's give this a test. Now we're going to first look for initial deflection. Right there. Can you see that movement? About 16 pounds of force. Now let's bring this down to the Allen. Oop, my stand moved. And, hmm, let's see. It looks like it's going to flex, but it's not breaking. Not yet, anyway. So, that's good. Let's see if I can apply more. There we go. So, now, we've touched the Allen. And, let me show you in here. It's now broken. I'll release the pressure. We'll take a look. And that one held up a bit better. So this design that they did with the additional ribs, it's a little bit different plastic. And it has the additional ribs. Remember, this is the Series 1, so they added more reinforcing ribs. A uh, little bit extra thickness, and it survived up to 180. Remember, the previous one failed at about 54. So, uh, this is definitely a stronger disc, but it's still now a broken disc. Uh, you can, again, you can try gluing that, but unfortunately, this has been compromised. It's broken all the way around here so we'll put this aside and we'll grab the cast disc i've got to reorient this because my discs are smaller diameter so i need to be able to reach the disc so there we go put this on come back up here zero out come back down here i have a funny feeling i'm gonna have to stand up for this <laughs> apply this force so let's see now previously i thought that that was deflection when i was doing the 1090 video but if you look the aluminum is so solid that it's not deflecting it's actually rocking like a seesaw on the shaft itself so this isn't bending like plastic it's rocking right on the shaft it's just a solid piece of metal so that is not a bending kind of uh, deflection but nonetheless let's take a look at it took 163 pounds just to get this to begin to rock on the shaft now let's apply more force. Let me see if I can back this up. And I'm going to apply more force. 
I don't know if I can get this. One sec here. Ah. Whew. <laughs> so, once again, <laughs> we've exceeded the gauge. That's 500 plus pounds of force. I could have kept going if I had a better gauge, but that gauge maxes out for measurements at 500 pounds. So let's take a look at this disc and see what we've got here. So other than a little bit of scratching from the metal that was pressing on it, <laughs> it's perfect. Over 500 pounds of force on the face of the disc right here. Now, let's do the wrought aluminum. This is the machined aluminum. One sec here. Put that down. There we go. Okay. So <laughs> we're going to come back up here zero this out. Now, again, this is even stronger than cast. Cast is strong, but this is even stronger. So this is going to, I already know it's going to exceed the limit of the gauge. I would need a much stronger gauge to test either of these to failure, but let's do it anyway. So we're going to apply the force and you can see once again, Watch that disc. You can see that the disc isn't bending here. It's actually rocking on the shaft. So we're going to apply the force. Whoa. There we go. And ta-da, 500 plus pounds of force once again. We've exceeded the limits of the gauge. So, you know, in terms of strength of the discs, there's no comparison. You know, when I made these, my goal was to make a part that I would never have to replace again. I, I want something that under most ordinary circumstances, ordinary exercising, that these things aren't going to fail. I'm not telling you that they're indestructible. I am sure that dropped under the right conditions, you could maybe crack a cast disc. You probably won't crack this one, but you could potentially crack this if you dropped it from the right height at the right angle, um, because the forces are far greater than anything that you're going to encounter while you're doing ordinary exercises. But, you know, I designed these for me to feel safe and to be able to do my exercises without having to think about how I'm holding my handle, you know, what are the forces on my handle? That's crazy. You don't, <laughs> you shouldn't have to think about your safety uh, while you're using your exercise equipment. So uh, that's it, guys. This is the, this was the last of the tests uh, for the stress testing, and you know, again, we we saw. Uh, the original disc fail about 54, uh, 54 pounds. We saw the cracked disc fail again at 16 pounds. We saw the 552 Series 2 fail at about 180 pounds. And both the cast and machine discs made it past 500 pounds of force. So, uh, hope you enjoyed watching the video and uh, learned a few things and I hope that if you find these videos helpful you'll subscribe and I will see you all in my next video thanks for watching